so in the first example here, I have f of x plus g of x. And you guys can notice here, I have fx equals absolute value of x plus 3 minus 1. And g of x equals x squared minus 7. So if I'm just adding the functions, you're just taking the two functions and combining them. So f plus g of x basically just says, take f of x and add g of x. So in this case, f of x is absolute value of x plus 3 minus 1. And g of x is x squared minus 7. Well, there's not really much I can do with the absolute value in the x squared, but you guys can see that I can combine my 7 and my 6. So that's just the way I'm going to write this. x plus 3 plus x squared and then minus 8. Now, the real question that we're going to discuss or we're going to be interested in is identifying the domain. And what we can look at is, I mean, if we look at the domain here, we see absolute value. We shouldn't even have to think about the domain. Oh, absolute value, domain's all real numbers. Oh, a quadratic, domain's all real numbers, right? Because we have those 12 basic functions that we looked at and practiced. So we know that these have no restrictions on their domain. So guys, when we look into like adding them, like this looks like a pretty confusing function, right? I mean, if you were to like, hey, what's the graph look like? Uh, it's kind of weird. However, can we at least make the understanding that if you're adding a function that's all real numbers, add another function that has a domain all real numbers, then this domain doesn't have any restrictions either, right? It's going to be all real numbers, right? Does that make like a logical argument for us to make? Yeah. There's no restrictions we're adding. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. And again, you could verify that by graphing. Um, but once we kind of finish this, you'll see